welcome to Women of Courage, where you will hear the stories of courageous women, women from all walks of life who have faced life challenges along the path of their journey, women who have tapped into their inner resources and found the courage to confront, to overcome, and to triumph. I am Ann Miner, your host for the show, and my guests have all agreed to share their experiences so others may learn from them. It's my hope that these stories will inspire you, that knowing you are not alone in facing the bumpy road of life, you will be motivated to keep moving, that you will take action and courageously pursue your own dreams and passions, no matter what obstacles are presented along the way. Just as our Women of Courage have won over the challenges, you can too. Stay with us. We'll be back with today's Women of Courage in just a moment. If I were brave, I Hi, I'm Marco Matern, host of Oxford County Living. Each week we bring you news you can use from here in Oxford. And this is the kind of weather when everybody's hiding inside, you guys got to get out there and work, right? How about we talk about something that I've never done, and that's cruises. Are they still popular? Cruises are very popular. You can nominate anybody, an athlete or a team at any time of the year, and the ceremony is, takes place at the end of October. Saturdays at 1.30, only on Rogers TV. Ted Rogers was just 27 when he purchased Canada's first FM radio station. In 1967, he founded Rogers Cable and then spent his life building a communications empire Throughout it all, Ted remained a deeply devoted family man, a generous philanthropist, and a thoroughly proud Canadian. On what would have been his 80th birthday, we celebrate Ted Rogers, Canadian communications pioneer. Three out of five people with dementia will go missing at some point, often without warning. With a safety plan, you can prevent missing incidents from happening. It's never too early to plan. Contact your local Alzheimer's Society today. Finding your way. For people with dementia, every step counts. With me today is Mary Jakeman. Welcome, Mary. I am so looking forward to having you share your story with us. Why don't you just begin with uh, the beginning? <laughs> <laughs> um, well, back in uh, 1981, when Bob and I were married, my dream was to go out west. Um, and so as we did, we traveled and toured some of the gift shops out there. And Bob always said it would be really nice to put our product out on the shelves. And I agreed with him, being um, in love. However, I said you need to have it outstanding or it wasn't going to sell. So it had to scream Canada and it, it had to um, have a presence that um, when you had a crowd of people in there, you'd sell your product in the end or it really wasn't worth our time. So we... Um, came back and we were farming with uh, his brother and wife. They thought we were nuts and uh, so we just kind of let it go and thought about it, talked about it. Um, we asked friends what they thought about maple syrup and then uh, we um, met an Australian and he said, well I don't understand why you don't wrap it in the flag. So that's what we did. You wrapped the maple syrup in, in the Canadian a, flag. Yes, we did. Mm -hmm. At the advice of an Australian. Yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but we knew that we had to be very careful because we didn't want to um, we didn't want to pay royalties and we didn't want to get into trouble with the Canadian government. So we Bob more did more of this, looked into the what was legal and what wasn't and so uh, we made what we called the swoosh. Um, we figured if Nike could do it, we could do it. 
<laughs> we knew that uh, red was a, a Canadian color and it was bright, it was cheery. As one buyer from Disney said that um, we were just a little bit too um, funky and uh, she wasn't looking for that look at the time and so we just said okay we'll carry on and we came out with the swoosh along with the red maple leaf but we made sure that our red maple leaf had more points and um, then we had uh, his cousin Becky um, she was an artist and so she came up with our logo and helped us uh, expand it and um, we introduced the maple syrup under our brand and the first gift show we did in Toronto um, we did it on a shoestring and we had a lot of buyers buy but we didn't have many sales and we sure wondered what we were doing at the end and of course the uh, the constant question we were asked is, so what's so special about your syrup? So we realized that if we were going to get ahead of the game, we had to come out with candy or cookies, something that was different than our competitors who were basically from Quebec. And so we started looking around for high quality, good candy. And we also looked for smaller candy companies who were willing to work with us as a small company. Mm -hmm. And with Bob's knowledge of maple syrup, my lack of knowledge in maple <laughs> syrup, um, because I came from a nine tap operation into 4,000 taps, it, it, um, I knew nothing. So we learned that um, through the, the candy companies that maple syrup with it being a liquid is a little harder to work with but they were willing to work with us and we came up with a fantastic maple brittle for years that's mm -hmm. what we sold and then from there we developed a maple butter crisp and a maple yogurt fudge and it goes on and on but what we found was once we got those products on and showed that we could perform uh, even though we were on a farm and we were farmers and we weren't afraid to admit it, that um, the buyers would slowly increase our line. And so if we had two items on that shelf in March, we had six items on by July. And then it just kept blossoming. The other thing that we realized was, why don't we approach the duty-free uh, industry, especially the airports and that? Mm -hmm. Um, after all, it's the first, for a lot of international visitors, it's the first place they step into when they land in Canada, anywhere across Canada, and it's the last place when they leave. Mm -hmm. And then we realize that uh, if we're going to do that, then let's make sure that it's in presentations that are upscale, because after all, most times, if you're buying at the airport, it's that last minute gift that you forgot to get. Mm -hmm. So make sure it has a, um, a pleasing pres presentation. And so we've really concentrated on that. So we designed our own ribbon. And we did that when we took the kids to Disney. And uh, mm -hmm. the first two days, um, it was design the ribbon, and then from there we could do Disney. So the kids were understanding. Impatient. Old were they? <laughs> the oldest was um, six. Oh my goodness. Yes. They were all very close. They were all 17, 18 months apart. So they were heavily involved in the business. Quite often we would have them try something and they would either say no or it's okay or yeah, how are you going to do it? And they would offer their suggestions. They didn't go to a lot of the shows at the first, but at the end they, they've been very supportive. So they're grown up now? Yes, my eldest just turned 31 and um, my next one will be 30. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> the youngest one, a boy, will be, uh, is 20, 
29 or 28, and the girl will be 27. And some of them are in the business. Yes, my eldest and my youngest boys, Devin and Chad. Devin uh, runs the production, manages um, all the maintenance, and uh, keeps the ball rolling. And Chad assists uh, with sales with me and uh, shipping the product wherever around the world. Yes, and when we come back, we're going to go to a break here just in a moment. When we come back, I want you to tell me about your global operations and how you got there. Okay. Stay with us. We'll be right back. If I were brave. When Cassie Chadwick was only 15, she convinced a farmer to mortgage his farm to buy her a ring. For that, she spent one night in prison. Chadwick's real name was Elizabeth Bigley, and she was born in Eastwood, just east of Woodstock in 1857. She married and divorced two times while stripping each husband of his wealth. She then became Madame de Vere, claiming to be a spiritualist who could make sick men healthy and poor men wealthy. However, after getting caught blackmailing her clients, she was sentenced to nine and a half years. Upon her release, she changed her name again and married Dr. Leroy Chadwick. In 1902, she convinced everyone she was the illegitimate daughter of bachelor Andrew Carnegie, one of the wealthiest men in America. Banks bent over backwards to lend her money, but she was finally caught when a loan for $190,000 was investigated. Carnegie claimed he had never heard of nor met Mrs. Chadwick. Cassie Chadwick died in prison after being sentenced to 10 years. She was only 48. Brought to you by Allen Castle Building Centers. Uh-oh! What? Mog! The TV's playing games with me! That's nice, Harry! The one on the right! What? Nothing! The homemade one! I love this game! The veggie pizza! What's that noise, Harry? I'm doing a sodium quiz! Homemade! That's the oven! What I win! Why, you dirty... Welcome back as we continue our conversation with Mary Jakeman. So Mary, you're going to tell me about how you went from being an Ontario-based, really innovative business to a global business. Well, we realized that um, once the um, stores in, in Canada had approached us, and we had approached them, vice versa, we realized that these visitors that were coming into Canada were buying our product. And once they realized the health benefits, um, the, the fact that the maple syrup was a natural sweetener, they decided why don't we bring it into countries like Japan, Australia, worldwide. And so we started receiving emails I'm not sure it's always been the best thing, but <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> However, it allowed us to be able to make sure that they were a legit company and learning how to work with the country and how they would be able to use maple syrup because not everybody eats pancakes, but people do eat fruit. So it was better to look at uh, promoting syrup using fruit or yogurt, things that aren't normal in North America. Hmm. Because even though North Americans move into the other countries, even like Brazil or, or Argentina and that, they crave for the sweets like maple syrup. And, and to be honest, you don't really miss it until you move away and then you realize that it's no, no yes. longer available. But at the same time, you wouldn't get a pancake in Brazil or in Australia, but you might get a, a crepe, mm -hmm. or you might get a, a, a flat cake. So, or, so it was learning how to take the maple syrup from Canada and use it with the foods that are grown or raised in that country. And so countries like like Ireland and Australia and that, they had a little more ease at bringing it in. 
but um, countries like Singapore and Japan, they had to learn a little more about how they could incorporate it into their foods, which they've done very well. And a lot of them have used it as a health drink hmm. that you and I probably wouldn't do. And how did you, uh, did you take partners or have venture funding? How did you manage to finance all of that expansion? We didn't have partners all, and we didn't have financing behind it. Uh, it was basically, um, they wanted it, they had to pay for it up front. Um, when we first started, we didn't realize that we could ask for the money first, and so we would produce the product. Um, we knew better than to release it without being paid, but um, in hindsight, I would recommend you get at least half the money up front. Um, we also had producers that we, uh, who support us in, here in Ontario, and, and um, they loved to make syrup, but they didn't want the marketing aspect of it. So they knew that Bob and I were willing to do that end of it. They were willing to support us. So as our markets grew, we put the word out, and their, their uh, production grew. So it's more than your own syrup, your own, your right. own produced on your farm that we, you sell? We okay. buy from other producers, and we reprocess every drop. That it's, it comes up to our standards, because it's our name that's going on it. So, so we're what accountable. Is, what does that mean when you say you reprocess every drop? What do you have to do to it? We heat it back up, mm -hmm. we refilter it, we make sure that it's standardized and it tastes just like ours. So you can buy the syrup, our syrup now and you can buy it in December and it will taste the same. It's just a family, a, a family recipe that's gone down. There's mm -hmm. nothing added. It's just, uh, it's just the way you filter. Mm. And, um, my boys are fifth generation and they're carrying on the, the tradition. So in all of that, you really were an innovator and a pioneer in championing a Canadian product around the world. Yes, we were. Was there ever a moment where you considered giving it up? Oh, there's been many times. <laughs> <laughs> there's many times when you wonder what you're up to, what you're really doing, and do you think you're gonna make it? 9-11, uh, that was just, uh, that was a nightmare. And when you thought that was cleared up, then it was the explosion of the baby formula, which then took um, a 250 mil not being legal in, in the airports down to 100 mil or less. Well, there aren't many 100 mil bottles made at that time. So it was a struggle to find something that looked good besides a plastic jug. And, and convince glass people worldwide to consider making a 100 mil glass, even though we weren't the wine industry, but I mean, they were being affected as well, but they were able to recuperate quicker than, than we were. The other thing was just, um, if it wasn't uh, for the kids and, and Bob behind me, um, wow, there were times that you'd think it's time to close-up shop. I had a lot of, I have a lot of good friends and in, in buyers that um, if you get a down day you can always call them. It's not all roses. Mm -hmm. I think the, I think the, the, the biggest surprise was the innovation that Bob did with the uh, maple ice wine syrup and then he was awarded the Premier's Innovation Award this past year. Wow. And um, truthfully, the kids and I thought he was nuts. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> taking, <laughs> taking two very sweet items and putting them together. And the ironic thing is it actually uh, lessens the sweetness. And it's very, very good. So it was, um, I realized then that um, my lack of confidence in his um, wisdom mm -hmm. um, changed very quickly and um, I learned that uh, I've learned over the years that um, maple syrup is its own is its own food and that you can use it on anything and everything and don't be afraid to try. So that's your your advice about 
the food product. What about the business? What advice would you give? Well, if you don't believe in it, you may as well get out of it. But if you believe in it and you're willing to give 24-7, as I say, you eat, drink, and sleep it. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the kids were younger, I used to ask for money. I'd say it's dripping out there and it's gold. It's liquid. Um, you know, you had to learn to work together as a team and there were a lot of things you had to give up. And you still do, but not as much now with the business starting to really take its wings. Mm -hmm. um, especially with the two young fellows working at it. Um, if it wasn't for them, I'm not so sure we'd keep going. Because <laughs> honestly, I think Bob and I were getting tired. Mm -hmm. And the other two, even though they're not working directly in the business, stewarding him, they still keep an eye on things and keep abreast of what we're doing. But it, it's hard work. But it's fun. <laughs> and we really do enjoy it. And uh, it's the meeting of people. Mm -hmm. and the smiles on the faces. So one of your added challenges was that yours is a family business. Mm -hmm. So if you were to give advice to someone else that was contemplating working in a family business or forming a family business, what would you tell them? Are you ready to give up some hours? And um, When you're single, you'll have more time, but you have to remember that um, when you get married, you have to learn to balance the act. And, um, but if you feel good about it and you feel positive and you really like what you're doing, then go for it. Well, that's great advice, Mary. We are going to have a few words from that wonderful wacky woman Jezebel Peppa here in a moment. So let's hear from Jezebel and we'll come back. Hello darling, Jezebel Peppa here. Darlings, it's wonderful being me, being a star, being successful, traveling the world. But I'll be honest with you, I couldn't do it without my family. You need to spend quality time with your family, darlings. When you get together, don't worry about whether the towels are folded neatly. Don't worry about whether the dishes are done right after supper. Don't worry about any of that. Spend that time laughing with each other, sharing with each other, learning from each other. Let me tell you, your children are too soon grown up and your parents are too soon taken from you. So celebrate the time you have with your family now. And remember to celebrate the Jezebel in you. Skateburg is a safe place to participate in physical outdoor activities. I'm Jed Lau, host of Simply Cooking. Here's a self-defense technique you can learn in less than a minute. And we're doing it from a headlock. Man grabs you. First thing I want to do is protect my chin and my throat. So I'm going to turn my chin in towards his body. From here, I'm going to clap myself to freedom. I'm going to strike his groin. Clap, clap, clap. Once I have his attention, I'm going to draw my hand up across his face. From here, I'm going to do a circular motion, drawing his head, controlling his nose to my hip. Now I have him here. We're going to throw a well-placed groin kick in. Push off to freedom. We're gonna do that one more time a little quicker. So I am in a headlock, turn myself chin in, clap myself free, roll him over, kick, push off to freedom. There's one more tip to help keep you safe. If I were brave. Every guest on Women of Courage takes home with her a beautiful bouquet of flowers, courtesy of Fernley Flowers. 
and an autographed copy of my book, Succeeding in Spite of Everything. Remember, in every setback lies opportunity. Opportunity for you to call up all that you've learned through personal experience and from others. To rely on your core beliefs and values. To find your way through to new opportunities. And succeed in spite of everything. Until next time, be courageous. What would I do if I knew that I could not fail? If I believed, would the wind always fill up my sail? How far would I go? What could I achieve? Trusting the hero in me. If I were brave, I'd walk the razor's edge where fools and dreamers dare to tread and never lose. Even when losing my way What step would I take today If I were brave What would I do today If I were brave What would I What we secretly dream What would you ask if you knew You could have anything Like the mighty oak sleeps In the heart of a seed Are there miracles in you and me? If I were brave I'd walk the Today, if I were brave, what would I do today? If I were brave, what would I do today? If I were brave, what would I do today? Call the Rogers TV viewer response line at 519-660-7548 or email us with your comments. Oxford showcases emerging and established artists from Oxford County. I've just worked on my own um, and learned the techniques as I've made mistakes. Wednesdays at 7, only on Rogers TV. The Boys and Girls Clubs of Canada is an awesome resource just for the simple fact that they have clubs in almost every